Hi, I'm Dr. Laurent Bannock and I'm the Director of the Institute of Performance Nutrition. And in this Science to Practice overview, I'll be focusing on antioxidants and exercise adaptations. So, reactive oxygen species and reactive nitrogen species, ROSs and RNSs, are unstable molecules that are byproducts of normal metabolism. However, Excessive amounts can deplete the body's defences and cause damage to cells, potentially resulting in exercise-induced muscle damage and muscle soreness. And it is within the mitochondria, which are the powerhouses of these cells, that are a key site of ROS and RNS production. And this is due to the increased rates of oxidative metabolism that occur during exercise. And specifically, it is this increase in ROS and RNS that leads to oxidative damage within the cell. But that's okay, because the body has evolved a antioxidant defense system that helps to keep this within tolerable limits. Now, this is where nutrition has been proposed to be a potential strategy, and in particular, high-dose supplements. And this is because within the diet, we know that vitamins A, C and E are dietary sources of antioxidants. And they help form the natural antioxidant system that actually protects the cells from these excess ROS and RNS levels that lead to damage. And of course, scientists have taken great interest into this and have conducted many studies that have tried to use vitamin C and E supplements in an attempt to attenuate exercise-induced ROS and RNS to try and minimize cellular damage and enhance the adaptive response to exercise. So the key question here is can additional antioxidants such as those found in high-dose nutritional supplements actually minimize the effects of ROS and RNS? And the answer is no. Appreciably, no they can't. And the first thing we need to take from this is that vitamin E is unlikely to be able to attenuate any ROS or RNS generated by exercise. Although vitamin C may have the capacity to reduce one key oxidant known as superoxide. But the real question here is would we really want to get rid of these oxidants? A classic you can but should you scenario. And the reason for this is because ROS and RNS are actually important for adaptations to exercise. And research tells us that if anything, vitamin C and E supplementation can actually hamper these exercise adaptations. So why is that? Well, again, the evidence tells us that this is probably through the attenuation of exercise-induced superoxide, which is a potent oxidant, and most importantly here, is also a stress signal. And the reason why the fact that it is a stress signal is important is because this is what leads to muscle adaptation. And that is the whole point in the training activities that we engage in, is that we want to result with a progression that is muscle adaptation. So what are the key take home messages to the research and evidence on this topic? Well. Firstly, there is moderate to low quality evidence that high dose antioxidant supplements may slightly reduce muscle soreness. However, these reductions were so small that they were unlikely to make any difference and so does not result in a clinically or real world relevant reduction of muscle soreness after exercise. There is also no evidence available on subjective recovery and only limited evidence on the adverse effects of taking antioxidant supplements. And so the emerging research also tells us that supplementation of high dose antioxidants may be counterproductive. And the main reasons why this is of concern is that these antioxidant supplements may delay wound healing, recovery from exercise as discussed, hinder adaptations to training and may even increase mortality, which is no good thing. So the key take home message from all of this, as of all things in sport and exercise nutrition, 
we need to take a food first approach. And in this case, we need to consume a diet that is rich in colors. Eat a rainbow, we could say. Because this will help ensure a sufficient supply of antioxidants are available to naturally deal with these RNS and ROSs without dampening the adaptive responses they stimulate after exercise, as would likely happen with the super physiological high dose levels that you get from supplements. So you need to read further into this topic and without question the first place to um, delve much deeper into this is this Cochrane Systematic Review where um, you'll find it's open access easily available and you can also find a short podcast by the lead author um, on this topic. I've also done podcasts on topics that relate to this, particularly with this whole process of the signaling response to training and exercise and how nutrition and certain nutritional strategies can help promote or uh, actually hamper this process. And here are a selection of of these podcasts that I recommend um, and also um, um, these two here, particularly episode 38 and episode 34 where we delve into nutrient priming and the whole molecular signaling process. If you want to um, access these podcasts, all you have to do is go to our website where you'll find a range of other resources that we provide. And also, if you really want to get deep into, into these topics and become a highly trained specialist in sport and exercise nutrition, then please do consider our online diploma in performance nutrition. So there you have it. I'm done with this. Uh, thank you so much for listening to this science practice overview. You can uh, find out everything as I've discussed on our website at www.theiopn.com and you can find us on our various social media channels at The IOPN. Thank you very much for listening. I'm Dr. Laurent Bannock and I look forward to bringing another episode back to you very soon.